Hello everyone, Leah here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you our supplies that I regret buying or do not like. Um, so the last video I posted was my favorite art supplies of 2022. And in the process of, you know, looking back at everything that I'd been using through the year, I also came across, you know, art supplies that I did not enjoy using or I have not used. And I thought, I should also make a separate video for those items themselves and just to share why because some of them you will recognize from past art supply haul videos or anything like that and then never saw again um and i thought i would share that so i'm gonna just dive right in with this one right here just to get the big items out of the way this here is a um nine by twelve sketchbook from Stillman and Byrne. It's from their Alpha series and during my previous video where I just talked about my favorite art supplies, I raved about the Alpha series and that's not what I'm complaining about actually. <laughs> I bought this book with the intention of dedicating it to doing color studies and color studies only to go through every single color I own, swatch them all out, mix them all with white, mix them all with greens and blues and yellows and all that stuff, and then have it as a catalog book. The problem is I didn't do that. I ended up just sticking with my little book that I love so much. So the only reason why I regret this purchase is that <laughs> I now have this huge sketchbook that never gets used sitting on my counter, taking up space. Um, I'm sure I'll find a purpose for it. I might rip these pages out and use it for something else down the road, but I kind of regret spending the money on this book because it's such a large book and realizing I didn't enjoy working with that anymore and doing this kind of art studying. Um, I might get back into it again because I honestly do believe that learning your paint supplies and testing them out is a great way to learn your supplies and learn what kind of artist you are and what kind of colors you like to use and how to get to those colors. But I had already done a lot of that on separate loose sheet paper versus having it here or in with my little book that I can carry with me everywhere. Um, so yeah, I regretted buying the big book. If you have an idea as to how to get that flow back or how to get back into doing this kind of stuff, or you have any suggestions, let me know in the comment section below because I'm not too sure what to do with this book now. I'm going to move that here. This one here is also a 9 by 12 styled sketchbook by Stillman and Byrne. It is their um, Delta series. I've had this for two years now and I wasn't too sure if I was going to show this video because it's not a 2022 purchase and include it, but I thought some of these items that I have do span outside of the year 2022. so. That's why I'm including it. And the reason I'm including it is this is the book that made me realize I do not like working in such big books when I'm doing my healing with art time. I think it comes down to personal preference. Um, it'll always come down to personal preference, actually, as to what you prefer to do. But I, I did not enjoy it. I found it so cumbersome when I was using it and it was always in the way so what i did was cut pages out and make smaller booklets so this is something that you can do if you come across a sketchbook that you don't enjoy because of the size and that is cut out the pages and do something else with it i created small little pages that like little booklet pages that I could use when I was outside with my dog sitting on the porch and doing something like this. So this folded one is from 2021, but it's the first one in my book. Anyways, um, you may recognize this if you follow me on social media. Um, I shared some of these stuff, you know, on TikTok and Instagram. Um, but yeah, this is what you can do with a sketchbook that you aren't sure about or you don't like the big sizing, 
you, that is an option to go about but with the other one the alpha big one <sighs> cutting the pages and doing something like this I don't know. I need other ideas. I need suggestions how to get back into that flow of doing color studies and things like that. But this is an option and I just that's why this is this is why I want to share it with you guys just so you can know that other people make this mistake too. We <laughs> buy our supplies and then we regret them afterwards. Um anyways, I'm just going to move this one. The last sketchbook that I'm going to show you that I regret is from uh, the handbook uh, Global Art Materials. I bought this at the beginning of 2022. I did a basic little sketch here for daffodils. I wanted to do a daffodil study and so I, you know, printed off a pattern that I had made from a while back and I was going to do some stuff in here with daffodils. But then when I was done drawing, I flip it over and you can see all the ink work. So it's thin, the paper ghosts. And I wasn't a fan of that. Um, and so I haven't really touched it since. The last time I did was to test this pen out to see how waterproof it actually is. So, mm, not too sure what I'm gonna do with this sketchbook. I might try to force myself to really like this book or to try to use it up, or I might just turn it into a grocery shopping list journal so I can rip pages out and go to the grocery store. I'm not too sure. But all I know is I, I regret buying it. I thought it'd be the perfect book because it's the perfect size. It's kind of like the size that I use when I do my landscapes and my small loose sheet paintings. And I thought this would be good. I can do my stuff here and it would be really easy to use. And it is the right size. Just the paper. I'm not a fan of the paper. Now, let's talk about this pen. <sighs> okay, so it's in one of my most recent art supply hauls from Jackson. I got it, you know, because I am interested in doing more line work and I thought it'd be fun to do in sepia color versus black, you know, play around with coloring, not so severe when you're doing things like when you are doing this, black is a very bold and severe color. So I want to try mixing it up a little. Only problem is when I start testing with this pen, it is not waterproof like it states and I know other people I, I've talked to other followers and they haven't had problems with it and it it can come down to a few factors that they pointed out it can be because this is a brush pen so more ink comes out so it takes longer to dry and that is true this does take longer to dry um, so when it's fresh it does bleed when you give it some minutes on this paper, it stays, it's waterproof. But if you use it on say thick watercolor paper, it takes a lot longer to dry because more ink has been absorbed into the paper. So you have to wait like overnight before you can actually use it. And um, I'm an impatient person. <laughs> So I, when it comes to doing healing with art, I don't always take time between my days. I like to sit down for 30 minutes to an hour and create a painting or a drawing or something. And if I have to wait overnight for that drawing to draw, sorry, that drawing to dry before I can go in and draw more and do more layers. <laughs> so I'm not a fan. I kind of regret it. I mean, it was like, I don't know maybe two bucks, maybe three bucks. It wasn't expensive, not that I can remember, but I still regret having this. Like, what do I do with this pen now? Um, kind of thing just sits there on my tabletop. Next, I wanna talk about these. <laughs> so they're from the Catalyst line. I, in my previous video, raved about my Catalyst wedge because it was bendy and perfect and the right size to do my abstracts with. I had purchased these two little Catalyst thingy mabobbers. Oh, they might even say what they're on. They're contours. Um, 
I'm thinking it would be fun to have this added texture because it's got little teeth here. And because this is stiff, I might be able to get some interesting lines out of it because it's a different size than what I have. Uh, I don't like them because they're stiff. And the reason I bought them is because I thought it'd be interesting to use them because they are rock solid. But turns out using them isn't as fun in, in actual real world situations. I am not a fan of them. And now I don't know what to do with them. Such a pretty color though. It's kind of like this, you know, greeny, muted, minty color. And it also depends on the color of the room that you're in. So it's an interesting plastic color that they put in there. Let's just, um, let's just do this one next. <laughs> So these, this is a paint set that I purchased at the beginning of 2022. Um, it's from the brand um, Shinhan? Yeah. Shinhan Art. I got it off of Jackson's website. They were on sale. They were supposed to be pastel colors. I was really excited. Um, the labeling on here is not accurate to the colors. So this shell pink is not orange it's a pink it's kind of a corally pink it's kind of matching the whole shell pink but when you look at other brands shell pink is kind of a pastel -y pink um i don't know i never picked them up to use them i every time i went to go do my paints i always gravitated to my uh mission gold um, pastels that I have versus these and I regret buying this set thinking that this would be a great new paint brand to get into because it just sits there now not being used <sighs> not too sure what to do with these either I'm not too sure what to do with any of the art supplies that I don't use I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it. I might, I might challenge myself actually to do a review on these. It'll give me the opportunity to really get to know the paint more and it force me to use them. But yeah, I bought them. I swatched them. I was like, oh, these colors don't really match. Put them in my drawer and just forgot all about them. If you are not new to my channel, you will recognize these. These are the Jackson's own name brand soft pastel set. Now, when it comes to their soft pastels, you can build your own set of colors, which I think is so cool of them. So you can pick whatever colors you want, fill it, and you get a discounted price versus buying them individually and all that stuff or being pre-packaged with the colors they think you should have. So I love Jackson's Art Supply. They are my favorite art supply store to go to. Um, they have almost every single brand I love except for my Sharpen acrylics. I wish they started carrying those. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and I even did a video about trying these out for the first time. Uh, I, I'll link to that in the description below. Here's the thing about them. And here's why I think I don't like using them. It's their texture. It's not that they aren't good. I I've personally haven't used soft pastels since I was a child. And I thought I would get into using soft pastels again. I would, you know, stretch my artist skills, try a new thing, um, expand my collection of art supplies to mix in with my mixed media and my healing with art time stuff. Um, but I didn't enjoy using them. And I think it's because of the texture. I didn't like how my fingers felt so dirty when I was using them and they made dust everywhere. And I kept having to wipe up the dust and then I put gloves on, so plastic gloves, so I didn't have fingers. And then I was, oh, where's that paint come from? <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> so like I was then wearing plastic gloves when I was using them and I was not enjoying my time. And when it comes to healing with art, 
It is so important that you enjoy the process along with what you're creating and the materials that you're using. If you are not the type that likes to get your hands dirty, do not use art supplies that can get messy. If you're not the type that likes certain smells, don't use art supplies that you have certain smells. But then again, how do you know something has a certain smell unless you buy it, right? Which leads me to my next thing that I regret purchasing. <sighs> These acrylic paints. Sorry for the wobble again. Table is uneven. Um, <laughs> So you will also recognize this brand from the same Jackson's Art Supply Haul video as the soft uh, pastels. I had already owned two colors from the Matisse line, a um, Australian gum color and a, uh, I can't remember what the other color was. I think a yellow, no, an orange. Yeah, okay. That's not the point. Um, I had two colors already. I had tested them out. I bought them from Jackson's and I had noticed a slight scent to them, but they weren't an intrusive smell. It wasn't giving me a migraine. I had used the one color and it was kind of a perfumey scent. And I was like, oh, it's okay. It's not causing any problems. It's not triggering any migraines. And then I watched some other artists using this paints and I loved how they were able to water them down with just water. So you can thin it out and you get beautiful drips and you can splash and be really messy with your abstract and like get some really cool effects. I was like, all right, so the smell is not bothering me. Um, they work great with the ones that I have with my paint that I use. I will buy more. And so I did, I bought a whole range of colors. I bought a bunch to complement colors I'd already had and to fill in areas that I didn't have. <sighs> and then I started using them and I got an instant migraine. It was like the they changed whatever chemicals that they use to give them an odor and they made it stronger. It came out more of a cheap cologne odor now versus a subtle perfumey scent, which I think is weird. Um, so when you are using oil paints, they come with a smell because of the materials used, the oils, the solvents, that kind of stuff that are inside your paint and the solvents that you use to mix and dilute and whatever it is you do with oils because I don't use that stuff because it gives me migraines. What's great about acrylics is that they don't have a smell. They don't have the same materials. They don't need the same chemicals, those type of things to create them. Some brands do have slight odor, um, but usually it's not very intrusive. But still, I'm not a fan. Triggers migraines, gives me a problem. I don't enjoy using them when I'm painting. I had a migraine so instant when I was using these that I could still smell the paint the very next day. I could only paint with my window open and a fan on and still I would have a migraine the next day. The problem that bothers me about it is I regret buying so many. I regret spending the money on them. I hate that they give me a migraine, but this brand is amazing. Like it's great paint. That's, I think the problem that might bother me the most is that this paint is beautiful. It's, it's not as glossy as others. It's just like my Shervin, you know, it's got this silky satin matte kind of finish. Um, they create amazing textures with them. They, this is a, I think like an A plus plus brand of paint. And now I have a bunch of them and I don't know what to do with them, which is just so sad. In my opinion, it's like so sad and frustrating. Next up, I want to talk about when it comes to frustrating is these Sennelier oil pastels. I have actually really wanted to get back into doing oil pastels. Um, and 
and I thought I could get past the whole texture on my hand thing because you know you keep them in this wrapping and you don't really get as dirty as you do with soft pastel so it's not dusty everywhere the problem I ran into and the reason why I don't use them is that because they're oil pastels they don't dry right they'll stay tacky on the paper um, and you need to then protect that paper before you store it somewhere and because I do so much of my work on loose paper that means I have to find a, a, you know, a special envelope type thing, put them in there so that it doesn't spread or rub on anything else and I have somewhere I can put it. So I have these just sitting there untouched and I regret buying them because they were expensive and they were expensive for such a tiny little item that goes unused sitting in my drawer. So I have several paint accessory type mediums. This one here is called GAC 100. It's an acrylic primer and extender. So you can use it with your acrylic paints to first prime a surface or to make it so that your paint lasts a little bit longer so it stays wet longer. And um, it has a weird smell. I was going to use it so I could paint in sketchbooks without wasting my um, my favorite, which is the uh, gesso that I put on paper because it's a thicker material like substance and you paint it on so it's kind of like a thicker stuff where this is really thin kind of watery based and you could just put it on your sketchbook pages and paint with your acrylic inside. It has a weird chemical smell and it gives me a migraine. I wish these things had labels on them, like a little sticker. Odor, if you get migraines, don't buy this. Odor, if you have problems with smells, don't buy this. Odor, if you're not working in a well-ventilated space, don't buy this. Although they might say that on the back. Oh, no, it doesn't. Okay, well, the point is they should still have a button, like a little sticker on it that says odor. Another same thing that I regret buying is this gloss medium. So when you're using a gloss medium, you can use it to create your paints to have the same consistency. You can use it as a layer in between something before you put another layer of paint on it. You can use gloss medium for pretty much anything you want. There's so many different hacks. I was using it for the purpose of varnishing because I have an art studio in a basement. I have a tiny little window. And again, as you've noticed, there's a trend. I do not do smells very well. So if I'm gonna varnish a painting on a canvas, I need to be able to be in a space where I can vent the space really well. And because I don't have that, um, I thought I would try doing gloss medium. A problem is, <laughs> uh, it, it does show brush strokes. So if you're using your brush and it has a texture, even if you're using a super soft brush, it still leaves a bit of a texture behind unless you really thicken it and you put a lot on there and you like pool it. Um, I used it twice and then I haven't touched it since. If you have any suggestions, so if there are any other artists down here or anyone that's been in the same situation where you can't varnish something, what do you do to, um, protect your canvas paintings let me know help and the last two items i purchased after watching a tiktok video <laughs> sometimes tiktok makes you do things and then it's like why um so i wanted to try doing a uh, pouring mediums with my paint on canvas and then I realized all the paint that I really love using is thick. So it's a heavy body paint and you need a thin body paint to mix with this to make it more liquidy, not chunky. And um, yeah, just sitting there in my drawer, untouched, unused, because I don't know what to use with it. 
All right. This video was not super long, but long enough. Um, <laughs> I hope this video was helpful. Maybe there are some supplies here that will help you understand or maybe avoid things that you too have found that you're like, yeah, Leah, I agree with you. I hate having dusty fingers. I will never buy soft pastels. Thank you for letting me know that is not my path for healing with art. Or um, you've watched this video and you're like, oh yeah, I've done the exact same thing. Uh, <laughs> you know that you are not alone in buying art supplies and then regretting them. If you are interested in using art as a path towards healing with stress, anxiety, or any mental health issues, hit that subscribe button because that's what I focus on here on my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Now, before I sign off, let's take a few moments to just take a deep breath in. Let that air out. Center ourselves. Focus on some positivity on your daily affirmation or mantra. Bring in a deep breath. Breathe out any negativity. All right. Thank you so much for watching my video. And until next time. Stay magical.